Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Bloody Mary Roast. And this recipe isn't just easy, it is super tender, and with this gravy, super flavorful. So stay tuned, because this recipe is up next. Here I've got a four pound boneless beef chuck roast. As you can see here, price per pound is about the same as hamburger. And this here is my favorite Bloody Mary mix made by Zing Zang. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. The ingredients are awesome and I'm telling you, this is the one to use for this recipe. I've tried other Bloody Mary mixes, they're just not as good. As you can see here, this stuff is thick. That means there's more concentrated ingredients going into that roast than some typical watered down recipe. Now, Bloody Mary mix in, just coat the bottom, put the roast in over the top of it. Now even if your roast is bigger like mine, just pack it in tight because it'll get smaller. Then Bloody Mary mix over the top till it's completely coated. No more, no less. Now cover with a lid. Set your heat on low. Eight hours of cook time. In the meantime, why don't you take advantage of that mix and uh, make yourself a Bloody Mary. This is my Bloody Mary brunch recipe and if you're interested in this, I'll post a link at the end of this video and in the description below. It is tasty. You've got eight hours of wait time so you might as well make yourself something to eat in the meantime. Now getting back to our slow cooker, after eight hours you can see it's boiling. It's amazing that it's boiling on low heat. But let's pull this out and take a look at it. See how tender it is. We'll just lay it right down here on the cutting board for you. I'm telling you folks, slow and low is the way to go. Now we'll tear into it with two forks. Is that tender enough for you? If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And once you got it all shredded up like this, you can go in for a taste test. Hmm, needs salt. So we're gonna hit it with a little kosher salt right over the top. And now we're gonna shovel that shredded meat right back into that crock pot full of all that flavor. Let it soak into it for about a half an hour. Punch it all down and make sure it's completely submerged. The way I like to test it, if it can't stay on my fork when I roll it upside down, we're good to go. Then I just remove it from the crock pot completely and strain out all that juice. And it's good to use some kind of wire mesh or sieve. Make sure you get out all the chunks. And once you've got that done, you want to get a hot pan on the stove, add a little bit of butter, some flour, and I make a roux, a blonde roux doesn't need to be that dark but just as soon as you smell that nutty flavor add that juice over medium heat you're gonna stir that constantly and this will turn into the best damn gravy you've ever had in your life I'm telling you you're a roasted potato steak kind of a guy this is the only gravy you'll ever need ever from here on out it is that good I kill the heat when it's still just a little bit runny, but it will thicken up as it cools down. Now you most definitely should have some cooked veggies. Whether you do those in the crock pot with the roast, or you do them separately, either way, they're good to go with the side. Just plate with the roast, and as much as you can handle. Then you can top off your Bloody Mary roast with that Bloody Mary gravy. And there you have it, Bloody Mary Roast with gravy, right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by PoorMan'sGourmetKitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.